Looking for a couple of unique ways to save on your crafting supplies? Just wait till you check out today's Tuesday Tip video. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Connie Stewart with SimplySimpleStamping.com. I'm so glad you're here to join me for another Tuesday Tip because today's tip is about saving you money. We are going to talk about some great techniques on how you can maximize your cardstock, which is going to save you money on postage and of course your crafting supplies. Let's go get started. Before we get into the nitty gritty of today's card, there is a free download that goes along with my video. So in this, you'll have um, the photos, the measurements, my complete supply list. If you need to come back and watch today's video, you can just click the QR code. And of course, I'll have the complete supply list here. You can go right, uh, click that. You'll go right to my website where you can order any of the supplies. Friends, I'd love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. But with that, we are ready to create our first card. This really pretty lemon lolly card. Um, I'm going to be using some dies. Look at what we have going on on the inside and get this you guys. This is all we're going to use to create this card. Isn't that fantastic? I have got a very vanilla thick card base. This is a five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. I then have a piece of lemon lolly four by five and a quarter, and then just a little piece of scrap of very vanilla or very vanilla thick, whichever you've got. And that's to create our little flowers. My piece is about two and a quarter by three, but any scrap will do. My first card is actually going to feature two stamp sets. Um, I'm going to use the Hope and Prayer stamp set for the majority of my card, but I wanted to bring in some little flowers. And so the Petal Park stamp set along with its matching punch are going to be perfect for this. Any flower will do. I just love the delicate flowers in Petal Park. You can see I've also got uh, some dies. This would be the Thoughtful Expressions dies. These right here, this is what's going to make for an amazing card. We are going to start with our lemon lolly cardstock. I'm going to take the largest frame. I'm going to put that right here on my lemon lolly cardstock. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. We'll need base plate one, thin die adapter two, and cutting plate three. I'm going to go ahead and lay my last cutting plate right on top. Let's run this through the machine. We're going to have something like this. I'm going to set this off to the side for just a minute. Now it's time to do one more cut and that means we're going to skip. We're going to skip one. So there was my largest. We're going to skip the next one and we're going to bring in the next size down. We're going to die cut that. Just center it up. We want a nice frame all the way around. We're going to run that through our die cutting machine. Now you may be wondering why I didn't do that all at the same time. Well, I really wanted to make sure that my frame came out just right. I just felt a little more confident running it through twice. All right, we are going to go ahead. Let's start with this piece. Funny, we're going to start with the inside of our card and then move on to the outside. With a crumb cake ink pad, I'm going to take my frame. I'm only going to set it here. I don't want to adhere it just yet. Um, it could be a little bit of a tight squeeze. So it's really just going to act kind of to give me a general idea of where I'm stamping. So right here, you're in my prayers. Then we can stamp the dove right there. Now that I kind of have that set and I know where it's going to go, I'm ready to adhere this frame to the inside of my card. So now I've got plenty of room to write my message, but the inside of my card still looks really pretty. And again, we're saving cardstock. Feel free to use your favorite adhesive, but with this being that kind of delicate die cut, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some multi-purpose glue and we will add that to the inside of our card. All right, let's move on. Now we're gonna work on the front of our card. As you can see here on my card, I did a little dry embossing on my lemon lolly cardstock. Now it's optional, but I really like to give that little bit of texture. So I have got the basics, one of the basics 3D embossing folder. There's three in that collection. This is the little crosshatch one. I'm going to die cut this in my die cutting and embossing machine, much like the way you saw me use it before. The only difference is you're just going to use base plate one and embossing plate four. And then of course your embossing folder in the middle. All right, we've got that embossed. So now that looks 
beautiful. I'm going to set that off to the side because I need to do a little more stamping here on this piece. All right, but this is important. I need to know how I die cut my frame. Did I put this up at the top, the bigger uh, little swoop or the little one? Well, in this case, it is the little one. And I want to make sure that I am going to have that and I'm, I'm about to stamp it correctly. Take a moment to make sure you know what side is up. I'll come back in with the crumb cake ink pad and we're going to say under his wings you will find refuge. Again making sure that is set the way I want it. We'll stamp right there. Now it's time to bring in the Petal Park Builder Punch. Now before I stamp this I do want to take a look at how it's laid out in my punch so I can see that the largest flower is at the bottom right. So I want to make sure I stamp it that way. We'll stamp that there in crumb cake. And now in lemon lolly, we're going to stamp the inside. This is what we like to call two-step stamping. So this is how we're going to take those flowers and we're going to color them in. As simple as that. Now when I slide that into my punch, I can line that up. And because all those flowers are set just right, just like that, I've got matching flowers. Put my card together. Now you do want to take a look and make sure you have the right side up because there was some great stitching um, on this die. So I want to make sure I've got the right side. I'm going to flip it over to put some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back, but I've got a little tip for you. If you have what I like to call Stampin' Dimensional bones, these would be those little outside edges of your Stampin' Dimensionals, this is a great time to use them. So I'm going to put the uh, straight edge to the outside. You see how I did that? I'll take another one, again, straight edge to the outside. All right, let's take another. This would be another style of my bones. And we will put this right down here. And we'll take one more. Let's see if we can squeeze that in there. Yep, we sure can. And I've got just a couple little spots here, so I'll just come in with a couple Stampin' Dimensionals right there. Okay, I'm going to remove all of these backings, bring in my card. I do want to make sure I've got the right side up. This is why we had to do the inside first, because I didn't want any of this in place until I had the inside stamped. So, adding that frame just like so. Doesn't that just give it amazing, amazing depth? I'm going to bring Stampin' Dimensionals in to my sentiment. About five should do it. We'll remove these backings and let's add this right here in the center. And now it's time to add those sweet flowers. So here's another fun tip. It's Tuesday tips after all. I'm going to lay my flowers here on my Stampin' Pierce mat. I'm going to take a pen. The pen is not out, but I can use that pen. And do you see how if you just press to the inside of the flowers, how they just pop? It's a quick way to get some instant dimension. I will add a dot of glue here to the center of the largest flower. And I'm going to add the smallest one there to the center. I've got two Stampin' Dimensionals. I will put one up here and one down here. I'll add my largest flower there. You notice how it's tucked down in that track that I have going around there. That is going to make it awesome and make sure everything kind of goes right where it is. Let's add a little bling. I thought the opaque ovals would just look perfect. So I'm gonna take one of the smaller ones to put in that flower, one of the larger ones, to put here in this flower. You could use any of your favorite embellishments, but I really like tying in. This, of course, these are in pecan pie, but I just thought it went really, really lovely. Guys, that is one space-saving card. Remember, all we had was a card base, that one little piece of lemon lolly, and a little scrap, and look what we were able to create. Lots of great ways to conserve your cardstock. I have one more card to share with you today. Don't forget about that free download I have for you that goes along with today's cards. You'll find it at simplysimplestamping.com or look down at the YouTube description for a direct link. 
I think you're really going to enjoy this one. We got some great dimension going on with this card as well. I created it as a Mother's Day card, but I think you can see this could be a sympathy card, get well thinking of you. We've got some beauty on the inside. Once again, I've got some paper saving tips for creating this card. And this is all we need to create this gorgeous stippled roses card. So I have cherry cobbler. Uh, that would be a five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. Two pieces of basic white that is uh, four inches by five and a quarter. And then a three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay, let me show you what we're going to be doing with this one. We're going to start with a four by five and a quarter. This card is going to feature the Stipple Roses stamp set along with their matching dies, all right? So let's go ahead and take that giant and yet oh so beautiful uh, Stippled Rose stamp. I'm gonna use my Memento Black ink pad and we're gonna stamp this right smack in the middle. We're gonna use this as a really amazing layering piece, but I think, hey, if we can get something out of this before we layer, why not? So we're gonna give this a really good stamp in the middle of that cardstock. All right, let me set that off to the side. I'm going to bring in another four by five and a quarter basic white. Let's stamp a rose right there in the bottom left corner. And now this would be the three and a half by four and three quarters. And the sentiment is in this stamp set, but as I said, you can use anything. I'm going to stamp Happy Mother's Day right down here in the bottom right. And let's go ahead and bring this one back in one more time. And I'm going to stamp Happy Mother's Day there. We're now going to bring in some Stampin' Blends. You could also use your Stampin' Right markers, whichever you prefer. I've got Mossy Meadow and Cherry Cobbler. I'm gonna start with the darks first, all right? So how about we go ahead and start with the leaves. I'm gonna start with that thick tip. And I like to, this is just my kind of silly method with blends, is to just trace, okay? Don't worry, you're not really gonna see these harsh lines, but this is gonna get me some dark mossy meadow on these leaves. And now with the cherry cobbler, I'm really just gonna kinda of scribble here in the center of the roses, cause I really want those to be nice and bold. So I'll get a little bit of that. And I'm gonna trace just like I did before. Neatness doesn't count, okay? Because when you use Stampin' Blends, they're all gonna to blend together. They're gonna to be beautiful. And I love that I don't have to be super neat. I just wanna kinda of trace around the edges of that flower, just like that. I'll do that here to the other rows as well. Now let's have some fun. I'm gonna come in with the light and you see I'm just going to blend those two colors together, the light and the dark. When that alcohol hits those edges, and of course, Stampin' Up, the artists at Stampin' Up have given this amazing detail to these roses. I'm gonna let Stampin' Up do the work, but we got that big dark center. I will get all of my big roses. Now I do have some off to the side, so let me go ahead and get those. Now we'll come in with the light mossy meadow and we'll bring some life to these leaves. Again, we've got the light and the dark coming together. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna just repeat that same process here with the rose that's on the inside of the card. All right, this is for the inside of my card. This is where I'll write my message. Now, for the front of our card, we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna bring in the matching dies and let's die cut that great, big, and amazing flower, but save this piece, we're gonna use it as a layer. And we have something like this. Now this is the back layer of my card, so we're gonna bring in that embossing folder again, the same one we used on the first card. Place that in your uh, embossing folder, we're going to run that through. Don't worry, we're gonna hide all of that, but, Instead of just using this as a layer, we got smart and we used the middle of that. 
I decided to do just a little bit more stamping on this piece. So forgive me for not sharing this with you there at the beginning. I'm gonna, going to take these leaves and I just wanna kind of bring them up and over my Happy Mother's Day. And you see we've colored those in with the blends as well. We're gonna come back in with another sheet of those Stampin' Dimensional Bones. Remember what we did. We always add the straight edge to the outside. So if anyone gets a peek, they will not see our little uh, money saving tip that we had going on here. I mean, let's face it, we can't give away all our secrets. All right, let's remove our backings. I'll add that. And just like that, no one will ever see what we had going on inside there. I'm now going to come in with Stampin' Dimensionals and add all over those beautiful and that giant set of roses. Make sure you get a few here in the middle. We don't want um, our image to sag. No saggy middles. That's what we say around here. All right, when you go to add this, you really can decide which direction you want it to go. But get this, it is going to hang off just a tad onto the cherry cobbler a little bit. I love how it spills over. And let's add a little bling because mom needs some bling. One of the classic go-to that is the jewel rhinestones. And I'm telling you, you add these to that image and those roses, and it just absolutely sparkles and shines. And there we go. Let me bring my first card back in. And friends, I'm telling you, there are some easy ways that you can conserve your cardstock. Think about your dies a little bit different. Think about those layering pieces, and I hope in the uh, video that you can really see that embossed cardstock in the background really sets this card and just makes it look amazing. But no one will ever know that we die cut those incredible roses from that back layering piece. And of course, we've got um, a matching rose on the inside. Remember this one? We were able to use this frame rather than toss it. Let's use it and make the inside of our card incredible. Friends, I hope that this video inspired you to save and conserve some cardstock. If you enjoyed today's video, help me out by giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel, and sharing with your friends. I always appreciate that. Thank you again for being here. I can't wait to stamp with you guys next time. Bye-bye.